I have an angel for a mother. And she seems to be pretty wonderfully amazing at everything she does. Whether it's her personal life or her professional life. And every time someone asks her, what is your secret recipe? She always answers by saying, Eshq. Eshq in Farsi is a very powerful word. It combines the highest sense of love and passion together. In fact, in Farsi, I think there are many words that loosely fit into the realm of love. As for me, I'm a triathlete. Now, please don't ask me how I ended up there, because I don't know. Triathlons is a sport which consists of three disciplines. It's a combination of swimming, cycling, and running. So you start, everyone starts in the water together. You swim towards your bike, pick up your bike, uh, cycle along, drop your bike, and race to the finish line. First one there wins. The way the process usually works is that athletes of every nation, they race in different um, competitions, and their qualifying times, and depending on their ranking within the national triathletes, they are then nominated to um, international or bigger competitions by the federation. The International World Championships was happening in London in 2013. In 2013. And I phoned up my federation, and I said I'm a triathlete, and I would love to represent Iran. And would it be possible to nominate me? They said, we don't have a female triathlon team. And due to restrictions and sensitivities, it's not going to be possible. But it opened up a dialogue. And we weaved through the complications, through the challenges, through the sensitivities. This journey took roughly six months. It was one of the most impactful, eye-opening journeys of my life, which changed me as a person and changed the course of my life. The night before the race, at around 10 p.m., my permission came through. And I had the honor and the privilege to represent Iran and Iranians in the World Championships in London in 2013. A few months later, I was having a meeting with one of the, with the sporting authorities in Iran, aware of the challenges and the process and the very near no that I got. She said, but why was it so important for you? Why did you, what was the reason? Why did you go through everything that you had to go through? And I, try, and I thought long and hard, but there was only one word that came to my mind, and that was esh. or love is a journey. Like all journeys, it's never ending. It has its ups and it has its downs. And it requires you to consciously go outside and seek it. The journey for me starts a few years ago when me and a couple of friends decided to embark on a journey actually on an adventure. We decided to walk from Tehran to the Caspian Sea. Now, what lies in between Tehran and the Caspian Sea is the most beautifully breathtaking Alborz Mountains, which is rugged, barren, and can reach up to four or 5,000 meters. I am not overly exaggerating if I tell you we had no idea what we set 
set ourselves up for. I was meant to be chief navigator, and trust me, that is where we go wrong. I tried to, look, I tried to find a map, couldn't. Went on to Google Maps, downloaded something. We put on a new hiking boot, a rucksack that we were about to topple over with a weight, found a compass somehow last minute, and we went on our way. First night, as we all gathered round the twigs we'd found, we were trying to light a fire, of course, in vain. A shepherd who'd been observing us for hours comes with a roll in his eyes and shows us how to make a fire. Day two, another shepherd comes along, and he says, do you see that goat over there? If you can, if you can capture it, the milk is yours. So here are us little kids scrambling across the mountains. We finally managed to grab this goat, but how do we milk it? We managed somehow. I didn't, the others did. I remember the fourth night ever so clearly completely and utterly overflowing with a sense of appreciation and love for the universe and for every single person, the shepherds and the nomads that we crossed paths with. I still remember the laughter, the sound of our laughter ringing in my ears as we held it up, ready to go to, to sleep. And I took a picture of us for me to capture that immense sense of gratitude to be alive, to be part of this universe, to be amongst such wonderful people. That night, we were attacked by a group of men. They came to our tent with large daggers and knives fit to cut off the carcass of sheep. They ordered us, they ordered us out, they they blindfolded us, they bound our hands, and they marched us up the mountains. There are two feelings I remember crystal clear from that night. One, immense fear, like I'd never been frightened before. My entire body was shivering uncontrollably. The second, an utter fear an utter sense of helplessness. Helpless towards everything that was happening and everything that was going to happen. There was no way I, had, I was completely powerless. For the first time in my entire life, I turned to something that is so much greater than me, to an energy, to a force, and I said, if you truly exist, Protect us. Let us go unharmed. Miraculously, the following morning, we were set free. I wanted to continue. Caspian Sea was still that way. But you know, I had my hiking boots, and I was all pumped and ready to go. But my friends just crumbled on the floor and started to cry. And frankly, they'd stolen their boots. I'd reason that mine were too small for them. So we had to turn back to Tehran. A few months later, I was to embark on a trip to the Antarctic. But a friend who I'd confided in urged me to go and see a psychiatrist. So I go to the psychiatrist, and he immediately diagnoses me with a mental illness. He prescribes all sorts of very strong medication for me. Now, whether it was those medications, whether it was the trauma catching up with me, or whether it was other people's reaction, I was ever so reluctant to go on that trip. I was no longer in a mental state. But the universe has its ways. And the chief leader urged me to go. And before I knew it, I had once again packed up my tent, I'd put on my hiking boots, and I was on the boat towards the Antarctic. Now, we were supposed to go on a big ship, but the motor 
wasn't working, and we found two tiny little boats and got on them and sailed away. We had not even left the harbor yet when I was sick and throwing up all overboard. Seasickness. And we had to get up every four hours and go and watch and look for icebergs in search of, um, like, to, to navigate our way to the Antarctic. I got injured. Whether it was the pain inside me that manifested itself as an injury, or whether it really was the sheer cold. It, they call it the non-freezing cold injury in which the feet swell so much and they become so excruciating that I could no longer walk. I've often been told I'm lucky they had not been amputated. The group was on a scientific expedition. They had to crack on. I was left inside my tent in the Antarctic by the shore. I can tell you one thing, loneliness. I started talking to myself, but there's no pleasure in talking when there's no one else to talk to. I tried smiling. I loved smiling. But again, there's no joy in smiling when there's no one else. I tried laughing. It's that ecstatic energy. But I realized that when there's no one else to share your emotions with, no one else to bounce off with, life is so joyless. Life is so empty. It's so meaningless. So I crawled out of my tent. And as I crawled out of my tent, I felt the warmth and the rays of the sun on my skin. It warmed me up from the core of my being. It set the beautiful landscape alight. I was mesmerized by the beautiful penguins and the seals and the wildlife around me. And I realized that the universe doesn't judge. I might lock myself up in a tent, but the sun continues to shine its unconditional warmth and love on anyone who's willing to crawl out and seek it. It treats all of us equally for anyone who's right there at that present moment willing to receive the sun. On the last night before we embarked back on our little boat, we went to a whaling hut. Um, and for the first time in weeks, we had a shelter over our head, there was, a, there was a chimney, there was a store with food. We were ecstatic, we were overjoyed. And the chief leader said, reflect in this moment. What is it that has made you so happy? When we leave this hut, you need to leave it exactly as it was, what made you so happy? And even better for the next person who comes along. It's been a long journey since that night in the Alborz Mountains when my life shattered. And I lost meaning of this universe and faith in humanity. But I can only tell you that this journey has taught me that I am grateful for every single thing that has happened to me. I am grateful for the tears and the laughter. I am grateful for the struggles and the joy. I am grateful for the ups and the downs. I am grateful for every single person who's impacted me in life, whether to cause pain and make me question, make me think, is there a greater force and energy above me? Or, make, or cure my pain and make me have faith again in this love. Because together, their combination is what has made my world so beautiful. It's these different shades that paint the picture. It's this combination 
that has made me realize I'm only a very little part in, in something that is so much bigger that loves and guides me. It's been a long journey, but it has taught me that the universe merely reflects what's inside me. Because within everything, every event, every person, there's a light that shines unconditionally, non-judgmentally, and I only have to seek it. It's a journey with its ups and downs, but for me, it's been a journey where I have learnt, and through the words of Rumi, grief, sorry, love, warmth, kindness, and gratefulness turns a thorn into a rose. It turns bitter into sweet. It turns pain into medicine. Through grateful love, a monster turns into a guiding angel. Grief becomes joy. As written in the loving words of my mom, as mohebat talha shirin shavad, as mohebat metha zarin shavad, as mohebat dordha safi shavad, as mohebat dardha shafi shavad. از محبت خارها گل می شود و از محبت سرکه ها مول می شود. از محبت نار نوری می شود و از محبت دیو گوری می شود. از محبت حوز شادی می شود و از محبت قول هادی می شود. If I was to stand and appreciate my hut, my hut on earth, and assess what it is that has made me so happy, it would be the love, the ishq, passed on to me by all, by all the wonderful people from my mum to so many others. And if I was to sail my boat away, what I'd leave on this earth is this love and ishq in the best way I can, in the best way I can. Thank you.